Barrel now has wind gusts up to 200 miles per hour. Hi everybody, I'm Chief Meteorologist Chris Justice. I'm tracking where Barrel is heading next and possible U.S. impacts down the road. Let's look at the storm right now because it is a monster. The sustained winds are around 160 miles per hour right there in that northeast quadrant of the storm and those gusts those gusts up to 200 miles per hour. We're talking about a significant wind maker here with wind and rain that's also going to be so devastating. Next up is Jamaica, the Cayman Islands, Mexico, and then down the line, possibly some interactions with Texas. Hi everybody, if you're new to the channel, I'm Chief Meteorologist Chris Justice, a trusted weather expert. I've got 20 years experience broadcasting and TV news. I give you early warnings of severe weather, including these hurricanes. If you appreciate that, you want to give this channel a subscribe. I'm reliable. I give you an accurate forecast and a direct approach you just won't find anywhere else. Let's get right to it because Barrel is a dangerous storm. That eye wall so pronounced right now as it moves off toward the west. The National Hurricane Center has been in and around this. Imagine flying in an aircraft into this kind of a monster here. So it really has shown signs of just deepening. Now, a monster like this cannot maintain that sort of strength for a long period of time, okay? It's going to go through a cycle where it's going to have to start to weaken. But right now, it's not showing that. It's got pressures as low as we can see. In fact, this is breaking records left and right. This is the earliest we've ever had a Category 5 hurricane in a hurricane season. Uh, it's also one of the strongest Category 5s. Just, I mean, deep, deep low pressure. And, and look at the makeup of Barrel right now. Uh, that inner eye wall right here. I mean, that northeast quadrant, just significant. That's where your 200 plus mile per hour wind gusts are. 200 miles per hour. That will be the equivalent of a, a big tornado, okay, that, that rips bark off trees, that, that flips cars, okay? This is wind that is that is just about as high as it can go, as high as you can imagine, okay? Where is it going? Well, it's, it's going to undergo, and I say weakening, Folks in Jamaica, it is time to prepare for a major hurricane. If we were just talking about a, a Category 2 hurricane at this point, it would be abnormal, it would be significant. But we're talking about probably a Category 3 hurricane making landfall in Jamaica. Now remember when I showed you this a minute ago. There's the track, here's the makeup of the storm. Pay attention to the eye wall. That's where the National Hurricane Center, center of the cone goes. Now, now pay attention to where the worst of the winds are, the east, northeastern side. So when I show you this track, if you just place the eye wall right there, uh, that puts the worst of the winds right over Jamaica, which at that point could be around 120 miles per hour. So Jamaica could take uh, a direct hit from a major hurricane, and next up would be a Category 2 hurricane for the Cayman Islands. Beautiful areas down there, folks, but now it's time to prepare. Now is time to act in Jamaica. My prayers are with you right now. Uh, the folks in Grenada, surrounding islands there, and the Windward Islands, my prayers are for recovery for you. Please, in the comments section right now, if you can, let me know where you're watching from. Are you in Jamaica? Are you in the islands? Are you in Mexico? Are you in Texas waiting for this storm? Are you in the southeast where we keep a close watch on all hurricanes? Now, as we go deeper into the future here, we've got Mexico, Cancun, could take a, a cat one hit and then it's in the gulf now normally when it gets in the gulf we have fears that it could strengthen again right now it does not look to do so it looks to continue to weaken so what about timing here let's go through this town by town island by island it's a rough day of seas for the dominican republic and haiti but tonight is the time to prepare you want to be in place secure where you're going to be hunkering down in jamaica okay so tonight is the night to prepare for that by the time we get to Wednesday morning, things are on approach to Jamaica, and, and this European model takes a direct hit or moves it just north of Jamaica, okay? Let me show you for comparison the GFS model. It's, it, too, is a little bit farther to the north, okay? Stronger goes north, weaker goes west. So in that scenario, we've got a, a, a very strong hurricane making landfall in Jamaica that could have winds sustained over 110 miles per hour. That will do some damage, folks. So tonight's the time to be in place. Tomorrow is when it's going downhill. Cayman Islands would be Thursday, Wednesday night, Wednesday night, Thursday morning, 
and then it's approaching Mexico, where it looks like it goes right into the Yucatan Peninsula, possibly near Cancun, just south. Again, 90 to 100 mile per hour winds, and it spills out back into the Gulf of Mexico. Let's look extended at where this goes. And again, just for comparison here, timing for Jamaica, you need to be in place tonight, but things go downhill on Wednesday. Cayman Islands, it's Wednesday night, overnight for you in the Cayman Islands. Going to be a really rough night for you. Then it heads toward the Yucatan Peninsula. Then it spills out into the Gulf of Mexico, where the European model wants to take it back over Mexico for a fifth landfall and final landfall. One in the islands, two in Jamaica, three in Cayman Islands. Fourth landfall would be over the Yucatan Peninsula region of Mexico. And then you got a fifth landfall and final landfall there in Mexico as well. So that takes it to the west. It's important to note that a lot of the models do take it west, okay? You're going to see trends today and, and kind of uh, like this GFS model, uh, it shows it going toward the north uh, as we move forward here. Let me map it out here for you. So 4th of July, it's over Yucatan. Saturday, it's on approach to South Texas, but you've got winds at 34 to 40 miles per hour. So it's a, it's a tropical depression or maybe a tropical storm at worst. Uh, so what do the ensemble models say? Really honing in on Jamaica tonight, folks. Jamaica, now is the time to prepare, okay? Please let me know where you're watching from. This is a devastating storm that has overperformed the models each time we turn around. Then it's the Yucatan Peninsula region of, of Mexico. By the time we get to July 5th morning, Friday morning, and then it's spilling into the Gulf of Mexico where most of the models take it west, northwest, weak. Now, Texas, you probably need the rain, but you don't want anything severe, and that's what we'll be looking out for. Here's the other models, the European GFS ensembles, the Canadian models, kind of curve it back up. But I want to show you something. Here, here's a look at the ensembles, basically the, the deeper dive of those. Uh, again, it's more west, west, northwest. So yes, Texas, Mexico, uh, could get a hit, but let me show you the, the same models, those exact same models. <clears throat> that model printed out for intensity. You can see for you folks in Texas, this thing takes takes a dive. I mean, it's Cat 5 right now. It's going to be a Cat 4 tomorrow. It's going to be a Cat 3, Cat 2 as we go into Thursday, Friday. It's Tropical Storm Cat 1 by Saturday, Sunday. Barely hanging on to tropical storm status by the time we get into Saturday, Sunday, when it will be somewhere in the Gulf of Mexico. So yes, we need to watch it for some rain. <clears throat> and of course, flooding can always be a concern with these type systems. But right now, it doesn't look to be a severe maker heading toward the United States. A different story for Jamaica. Again, another way of looking at it. <clears throat> July 3rd, Wednesday. That's tomorrow for you folks in Jamaica. Cayman Islands, tomorrow night. Mexico. Friday morning, spilling out into the Gulf. Saturday, it's meandering around Saturday night. Sunday, even into Monday morning, Monday morning landfall back into Mexico. That's the European. The GFS model wants to take it toward Jamaica tonight and tomorrow. Cayman Islands tomorrow night. Mexico, same timing, a little bit earlier maybe, Thursday night, not Friday morning, Thursday night for Mexico. Then it's barely hanging on. Probably just a regular old low pressure system coming up toward Texas there on the models. What about that storm behind it? Well, I talked about this yesterday. Barrel is so strong, it's upwelling. It's bringing water up from the bottom layers of the, the ocean. Now, you, you got to know if you've ever done any scuba diving or anything, it's cold at the bottom of the ocean. Um, I've done that. I mean, it's it's substantially colder. Well, a hurricane so powerful that suction brings up the colder water from the bottom of the ocean, leaves it at the surface, and then leaves. So then the, the surface level waters, it's going to mix out eventually, right? The ocean's always moving. But when that water is substantially colder right behind it, a hurricane behind that can't sustain. Hurricanes or tropical systems need or want 80 degree water or more. It's just not there right now. It, it, it's just two worked over right behind barrel, and that's a good thing, okay? If there's one silver lining here, it's that it would be almost impossible to get two back-to-back -back systems, which is why the models have really gone down on possibly developing anything with this other 
possible hurricane. That's good because the models a couple of days ago were saying possibly back-to-back -back hurricane. So that's the good news I have for you is high pressure settles in here, a prolonged period of dry weather. You may get a little bit of rain from that next invest in the islands, especially Grenada areas that you just don't need even a drop of rain. But beyond that, high pressure settles in and dries things back up. You can begin the cleanup process in the islands. It, it's going to be really, really hot. It's going to be really, really dry. Saharan dust takes over and Thankfully, folks, we can kind of breathe a sigh of relief after a, 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 a really, really crazy start to hurricane season. Things calm down. I'm mapping out here through Sunday, July 15th. I just don't see anything forming uh, due to some drier air temporarily there in the Atlantic. So please, again, um, let me know where you're watching from in the comments. I'll try to answer your questions throughout the day. But my prayers are with you in Jamaica. My prayers are with you for recovery. For, for rebuilding in the islands. Uh, just now is the time to act in Jamaica, the Cayman Islands, Yucatan Peninsula region of Mexico. And for Texas, the southeast, it doesn't like we'll get anything more than rain out of this, but you know we'll keep our eyes peeled on it for you. And again, if you're new to this channel and you appreciate my no-nonsense approach to weather, I've, I've done this in TV, I've done this online. I, weather is a, is a passion for me. I'm a farmer's son from North Carolina, and, and, and I know how weather can impact people's lives. And, and for me, I'd rather be transparent with you. I'd rather tell you what I see, when I see it. So if you appreciate that direct approach to weather, please give me a subscription here. And, and hey, uh, you know, when it comes to the next storm, I'm going to tell you when it's time to be concerned, but I'm also not going to hype anything. I'm going to let you know what I see when I see it, which is kind of unusual. Most people in weather want to know a little bit more when they when they, when they they forecast something. I'm just going to give it to you like I see it, but I'm also going to do it in a responsible way so that you know how to take that information. Folks, stay safe today, and we'll keep you posted.